Praise the Lord. I count it a great privilege to be asked to minister at the Holy Ghost Congress 2021 with the theme the siege is over. And my prayer is that the presence of God in this place and the power of God through his world that will be coming out through this Congress will set every participant free from every satanic siege. I'm speaking tonight on overcoming the siege of fear. Fear is a satanic siege that holds God's people bound. Job said, the things I greatly feared has come upon me. And that for which I was afraid has happened to me. Fear is an enemy of the believer. And I want to believe that tonight, by the power of God, everyone under the siege of fear shall be set free in the name of Jesus. We must first recognize that fear is a spirit. And we can only overcome this spirit by engaging relevant spiritual forces. Paul writing to Timothy said, Whereby I put you in remembrance to stay of the gift of God that's in you, which was given you by prophets and by laying of my hands. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy 1, 6 to 7. Fear is a spirit. Paul also writing in Romans chapter 8 verse 15, we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. So fear is definitely a spirit. And this spirit can be conquered and overcome by engaging relevant spiritual forces. These, among others, include the spirit of revelation. It takes light to expose the weakness of darkness. You can't be afraid of the unknown when you have light. Paul praying for the Ephesian church that God may give them the spirit of revelation and wisdom in the knowledge of him. When we have the spirit of revelation that releases light, fear is exposed and the believer is free. Those who do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. And then, number two, the spirit of faith. Why are you so afraid? How is it that you have no faith? Mark chapter 4, verse 40. Why are you so fearful? Oh, you have little faith. Matthew 8, 26 to 28. What we are saying here, there is a spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians 4, 13. Having received the same spirit of faith, we have believed and therefore we have spoken. There is the spirit of faith. It will overthrow the wickedness of the spirit of fear. It will displace the wickedness of the spirit of fear. We saw how 10 of the 12 spies that Moses sent to spy the promised land lost their place to fear. We are not able to take the land. There are giants out there and we are like grasshoppers in our own eyes and so are we in their eyes. But Joshua and Caleb had another spirit. They took the land. They declared, the people are bred to us. God has given us the land, they can't stop us. The spirit of faith gave those two their place against ten that lost their place to fear. I mean, only Joshua and Caleb made it to the end. Fear is a spirit and can only be conquered by relevant spiritual forces. What is fear? 
or what is in fear. Fear destroys faith which engenders defeat. In Ephesians 6 and verse 16, above all, taking the sheet of faith, we are which you be able to quench all the fiery or fearful darts of the devil. Number two, fear robs believers of their place in destiny. 32,000 volunteered in Gideon's army. And the Lord said for him to announce in the ears of the people, if anyone is afraid, let him go back. 22,000 went back. And at the end of the day, only 300 made it. Only 300 made it. Fear is a robber. Arise, go to that place. You are grieved by fear. What if, what if, what if? And you lost out. Fear is a robber. It has robbed many of their best in life. Number three, every believer is a victim of his fear. Every believer is a victim of his fear. We have the horrible example of Job. The thing I really fear has come upon me. Number four, fear opens the door to all kinds of torment and satanic assaults. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. First John chapter 4 and verse 18. And that is made perfect in love is free from the torments of fear. Fear is a tormentor. Fear is a destroyer. We must beware. After Job surrendered to fear, Satan went forth and smote him with boys. Fear is a tormentor. He was using broken pots to scratch his body. Let's now look at some biblical cure for fear. Number one, commitment to serving God and the interests of his kingdom secures God's ever-abiding presence with us, which allays all fears. Go to all the world and preach the gospel. Now, which you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. I am with you always. Jesus sent them two by two into every place where himself will come. When we are on the go for him, he comes along with us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Lord, which will always, even to the end of the age. So our commitment to serving God and the instance of his kingdom secures God's ever abiding presence with us, which allays all fears. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 19. The cemetery returned with joy, saying, Even devils were subject to us in your name. Because he said them to where himself will come. No devil could stand his presence. Devils were subject to them in his name. Because he was in their company. Because he went with them. Luke chapter 10 and verse 1 to 2. We must remain, number two, we must remain conscious of the angelic covering over our lives. The Bible said the angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to us who shall be heirs of salvation. Hebrews 1.14 So every child of God has a guardian agent or a guard, a security angel. Say that children behold the face of the Father in heaven day and night. Matthew chapter 18, verse 10. So we have angels with us at all times. They are sent to be our guardian, our protector, our defender at all times. Psalm 34, verse 7 says, The angels of the Lord are round about them that fear him and delivers them. They are not just there singing and flapping their wings. They are there for our rescue. We must be conscious 
of the angelic covering over our lives. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep them in all their ways. They shall bear you up upon their wings, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12. The angels of God are assigned to us for our defense in the case of battle. When Jesus was arrested by the wicked, he said, don't you know I can now pray my father and give me more than 12 legions of angels? Jesus was saying, there are angels available to us on, the, on demand in that day of battle. The good news is, we will not suffer defeat with all the great provisions God has made for us in battle. You have angels assigned to you, I have angels assigned to me. I must be conscious of them and keep them on duty by effectual use of our tongue. Effectual use of our tongue. He said, let not your mouth cause your flesh to say, to say, neither say thou before your angel, it was an error. You say it, they carry it out. They are our messengers. They do our bidding. They are messengers and they do our bidding. So all these have gone. I'm dead. All that th the things we say, we are giving them orders to ensure delivery of what we say. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 6. He said, I send an angel to go before you, to keep you in all your way, till he brings you to the place I've ordained for you. Exodus 23 and verse 20. Now, they are there. He said, beware of him, because he will not forgive you. So we must be careful the way we use our tongue, lest we bring troubles our way without knowing so, without knowing it. We must remain conscious of the angelic covering over our lives. Number three, we must be conscious of our new redemptive status in Christ. We have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Now, when you leave this country today to another country, you come under the laws of the new country that you are going into. The powers and the laws of this country has no more hold on your life. So, at redemption, we are translated. We were moved out of the kingdom of darkness. So the laws that obtain, they are no longer hold on our lives. This is very important. Colossians 1.13, we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his own dear son, who is the light of the world. So we are no longer under the wicked rules of the kingdom of darkness to steal, to kill, and to destroy we must be conscious of our new redemptive status. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6, he said, he has raised us up together with him and made us to sit together with him in heavenly places. And that is located far above all principalities and powers. All principalities and powers. Far above where the tormentors live. We are far above the region of fear. He has raised us up together with him. For by grace we are saved. So when we are saved, we have been raised together with him. Made us together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And it's located far above. Ephesians 1, 22-21. All principalities and powers. So there is nothing for us to fear. By the blessings of redemption. Now, number four. We must be conscious of the seal of the Holy Ghost upon our lives. We are sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Lord shall set up his standard against him. Ephesians 1 13 and Isaiah 59 and verse 19. We are sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. We saw that demonstrated in Psalm 105 and verse 13. To 15. When they went out from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Say, touch not my anointed. I'll do my prophets no harm. Touch not. The seal of the Holy Ghost said, touch not seal. 
upon the lives of the believers. It's a touch not seed upon the life of every believer. So being baptized in the Holy Ghost is not for fun. It's not just to have our prayers answered. It's not how to, just to pray in the Spirit. Being baptized in the Holy Ghost is a seal of protection over the lives of the believer. It's a seal of protection. So anyone who is here to be baptized, particularly among all of our new converts, it is your privilege to enjoy divine protection in this wicked world and be shielded from the torments of fear. That shall be the portion of everyone in the name of Jesus. Number five, we must continue to dwell and grow in our love for God. He that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. God knows no fear. No evil spirit can stand the way of heaven. Lift up your head, see gate, be lifted up your everlasting doors that the King of Glory might come in. When we dwell in love, we dwell in God and God in us. That destroys every trace of fear that blocks access to the spirit of fear into our lives. Now, why must we grow in love? This is what the Bible says, Ephesians 3, 17 to 19. It said that you may dwell, that you may grow in love to know the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height of the love of God, so you might be filled with all the fullness of God. When we are filled with his love, we are filled with all his fullness, because God is love. God is love. He that dwells in God, dwells in love. So when he's filled with love, he's filled with God, and therefore knows no fear, Knows no fear. Knows no fear. Filled with love. To be filled with love is to be filled with God. And to be filled with God is to know no fear. So I want to believe that this Congress will mark the end of the siege of fear on the life of every participant and everyone hooked on across the nations of the world. Fear is an enemy, not a friend. We must confront fear as an enemy. I said several times, what you don't want you don't watch. What you don't resist has a right to remain. And what you don't confront, you cannot conquer. Fear is an enemy. We must confront it and conquer it by the forces of revelation, the force of love, the force of faith. We must get fear off our life. Every promised land that God has promised us has giants in it has giants in it, has giants in it, has giants in it. We are here in the forest, and then uh, in this settlement where we are, there's a proverb down here that as terrible as utter witches. I've been hearing that since I was a baby, since I was a child, but God said it's their place. And so I can't even remember it at all. We came in here, and all the devils disappeared. All the devils disappeared. Nothing can rob a believer of his destiny like subjection to fear. Fear is of the devil. It's there to steal, to kill, and to destroy. In the name of Jesus Christ, no one shall be destroyed. Now, we must continue to engage a lifestyle of thanksgiving and praise to retain God's manifest presence, which reinforces our confidence against the wickedness of the wicked. Do I pass through the valley of the shadow of, uh, of death? David said, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me, my God. And who was this David speaking? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgment. Psalm 34 verse 1 and Psalm 119 verse 164. Every truth, thanks, 
thankful and praiseful believer retains God's manifest presence via the mystery of praise, which allays all fears at all times and in every place. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of, it, of, of death, I shall fear no evil because I know how to retain your presence with me by blessing you at all times and letting your praise be in my mouth continually. So being thankful and praiseful retains God's manifest presence which destroys all fears, which allays all fears. In the name of Jesus, no one here will miss his place. Remember Psalm 22 verse 3? He said, God inhabits the praises of his people. When we are in praise, we are carrying God's manifest presence. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Romans 8 and verse 31. The siege of fear is over. A new day dawns on everyone's life from now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well, in conclusion, faith is the master cure for fear. Through faith, they pass through the Red Sea as on a dry land. It takes faith to look at the Red Sea and head in that direction. Not two people, not three people, three million people. Through faith, they observed the spring of blood which protected them while every male born in Israel, I mean in Egypt, from the firstborn, the firstborn of Pharaoh to the firstborn of the peasants, every firstborn of every family died that night. But their faith in heaven's instruction secured them. It's interesting. Through faith, they subdued kingdoms. Hebrews 32, 11, 33, and 34. They wrought righteousness. They quenched the furnace of fire. They stopped the mouth of lions. Man. Women received their dead back to life. Faith. Faith. The master kill. For the spirit of fear. Wherever the spirit of faith dwells, the spirit of, of fear has no space. One cannot be filled, be faith filled, and be full of fear at the same time. We saw that in Daniel. We saw that in Shirab, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel 3 17 to 28, and Daniel 6 16 to 23. Faith and fear cannot coexist in the same space. Wherever faith dwells, fear cannot be there. The brighter the light, the farther away the voice of darkness. That light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And that was the true light that lights every man that comes into this world. It's awesome. When we assess the light of scriptures, it at least all fears in our lives. I want to believe that every one of us as a partaker of this 2021 Holy Ghost Congress shall live a fear-free life from this time onward. You'll never be robbed of what belongs to you anymore. The enemy shall not afflict or torment you anymore because you have all the redemptive provisions to be free from fear. And you shall indeed be free. The stronger our faith, the more helpless the wickedness of the wicked. Abraham did not stagger the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And all the promises came to pass like a dream of the night. The stronger our faith, the more helpless. The wicked becomes. 
I believe we are in for the best of time. He said, you have not, because you have not. He that ask and receive it, he that seek and find it, and to him that knock it, the door shall be opened. I think we need to pray and ask the Lord to open our eyes to the wondrous things out of his law so we can be free from the torture and the torment of fear. Lord, show me the provision you have made for me in details that is to make me live a fearless life. Lord, endure me with the spirit of life that will set a seal of protection over my life. It's time to ask. It's time to seek light from God's word. It's time to get all materials that addresses the spirit of fear and walk out of it for free. Doing nothing about a situation will never bring a change. It's time to do the right thing about the challenge of our life. Your life is not permitted to be subject to fear. He has redeemed your man to live a fear-free life, it's time to take responsibility. I believe it's time to take responsibility. Walking in the light of God's word, which is walking by faith, we quench all the fearful dart of the devil. Ephesians 6.16 Above all, taking the sheet of faith, and you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. I believe Everyone partaking of this Congress this year, the Holy Ghost Congress, we live a fear-free life all of our days. The fear of the unknown, the fear of the future, the fear of our, the lives of our children, whatever constitutes fear, whatever breeds fear in our life, God will put an end to it. God will put an end to it. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is out to put an end to it. There is nothing God tells us to do that is our size. He always speaks beyond us so it can be clear he did it. And when we are afraid, we won't take any step. We have this um, tribe of Reuben. He said, Reuben, you are my firstborn. The beginning of my strength. The excellency of wisdom. But thou shalt not excel because you are so unstable as water. Now, in Judges chapter 6, he talks about this type of uh, Reuben. He said, Why are you standing still? Because of fear? So they lost their place because they won't go forward. Fear won't let them go forward. No one here will lose his place. My prayer tonight is that every one of us that's a partaker of this Holy Ghost Conference for the year 2021 will return with a fear-free testimony by the time next year's Congress is holding in the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for sending us your word tonight and I pray that this sent word will bring deliverance, will bring healing, will bring breakthrough into the lives of everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, amen.